Chapter 5.1, exercises 22 through 29. This is the section of the book that has to do with trigonometric identities. And we're going to use trigonometric identities to simplify each expression. We go to our first odd number problem in this set, which is 23. We have cosecant x minus cosine x cotangent x. Well, what we're going to try to do is change everything in this expression here in terms of sine and cosine. And specifically, uh, cosecant theta, we'll say cosecant x, is equal to 1 over sine x. And then also, a cotangent x is equal to 1, and uh, we'll say is equal to cosine x over sine x. I was about to say 1 over tangent x, but that's not going to do so much good. So let's go ahead and rewrite this expression based on these changes. We're going to replace cosecant x with 1 over sine x. And we're going to replace right, cos, cosine x. We're going to replace this cotangent x with cosine x over sine x. Okay. I'm just going to put an equal sign to the left as we carry. So what we have is a common denominator for both of these terms now. And so we can rewrite this as 1 minus cosine squared x. And where do we get cosine squared x? Well, that's cosine x times cosine x over sine x. Now, for this 1 minus cosine squared x, let's uh, look at our Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So if we subtract cosine squared theta from both sides of this identity, We have a cancellation here on the left, and on the, we have sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we're going to take this in the numerator, 1 minus cosine squared theta, and replace that 1 minus cosine squared theta with, with the sine squared theta. Or we'll call it sine squared x. Okay, so we have sine squared x over, we keep our denominator in place, which is sine x, and um, sine squared x is sine x times sine x. And so what we have is a cancellation of one of these sine x's in the numerator, so we're left with sine x. And that's going to be our most simplified expression. We could verify this in our calculator. One, two. Next number problem, which is 25, we have tangent x plus sine x secant x over cosecant x tangent x. And again, it's going to be the same principle we've done on that previous problem. We could rewrite this expression. Now, tan x is going to be equal to sine x over cosine x. Okay, sine x over cosine x. Uh, secant x. Well, secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x. We have cosecant x down here. Cosecant x equals 1 over sine x. And now we can just make these substitutions. And rewriting this expression here, we have tangent x replaced with sine x over cosine x. 
and then we say plus sine x and secant x we rewrite as as 1 over cosine x. Okay, so that's our numerator rewritten in terms of sine and cosine. Now our denominator, we draw this bar, cosecant x is 1 over sine x. And then tangent x is sine x over cosine x. Okay, so that's kind of expanded. So next, we kind of look where we can simplify. Well, this sine x over sine x, those will cancel each other. So we can do that. And then let's go ahead and rewrite this expression. Well, what we have in the numerator is we have, I'm going to make a big division bar here. Okay, we have sine x plus sine x, this, this on the right of the plus sign, it's sine x or cosine x, sine x or cosine x, and so what we have is 2, 2 sine x over cosine x, And then in the denominator, we have left 1 over cosine x. Let me go ahead and get rid of this length of this division bar. So, looks like we're probably heading in the right direction as far as becoming more simplified. And the next expression we're going to do is dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we're going to take 2 sine x over cosine x, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over cosine x, which is cosine x over 1. Well, what happens here? Well, cosine x over cosine x cancel each other, and what are we left with? 2 sine x over 1. So this 2 sine x is our simplified version of this original expression. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is on number problem 27. And let me go ahead and make that just a little bit bigger. Okay, we have cosecant x cosine x plus cotangent x over secant x cotangent x. And then we're going to do the same thing, put all this expression in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant x equals 1 over sine x. And cotangent x. equals cosine x over sine x and let's see we just have secant x right secant x equals 1 over cosine x so we have the same suspects we had last time pretty much for problem 25 well this cosecant x we rewrite as 1 over sine x And then we multiply that by cosine x, Just leave that in place, plus cotangent x, which is cosine x over sine x. And that takes care of our numerator. Now for our denominator, secant x is 1 over cosine x. and times cotangent x, which is cosine x over sine x. Now, does it look like we have something we'll be able to simplify with? 
Well, yeah, sure does, doesn't it? This cosine x over cosine x, they will cancel each other. And so what we're left with in the numerator is we have cosine x plus cosine x over sine x That's just strictly rewriting the numerator. In the denominator, we have left 1 over sine x. Okay, and to simplify, and we'll go to the right here, this cosine x plus cosine x becomes 2 cosine x. I'm just going to put over sine x. And one step at a time, I'm going to just rewrite this as 1 over sine x. And dividing by a fraction of the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, so now we can set this thing equal to 2 cosine x over sine x. And we take this 1 over sine x that we're dividing by and use that but multiply instead by sine x over 1. And sine x over sine x will cancel each other. And we are left with our most simplified answer, which is 2 cosine x, which we box in as our correct answer. And we proceed to our next and last odd number problem, which is 29. For this one, we have we have secant squared x over cotangent squared x plus one. So what we're going to do for this is uh, rewrite the secant x. Remember, secant x is equal to one over cosine x. And then we have cotangent x is equal to cosine x over sine x. And so we'll be able to use these two identities here to uh, expand. And a lot of times when you simplify trigonometric expressions are you're going to expand first to make things actually look more complicated before they'll eventually simplify, at least you hope they will simplify. So we're going to rewrite the secant squared theta as 1 over cosine squared theta. Or cosine squared x, rather. Same concept. Okay, and in our denominator, we rewrite this as sine x or sine squared x over cosine squared x plus 1. Well, what we're going to do is kind of uh, combine our denominator. And I'm going to rewrite the numerator the same as we did before as 1 over cosine squared x. But our denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to write sine. Let me see, I made a mistake here, didn't I? When you're rewriting cosine cotangent, you should rewrite as cos cosine squared x over sine squared x. Okay, that's that looks better. Okay, so now we rewrite as cosine squared x over sine squared x. 
plus, now I'm going to rewrite 1 as sine squared x over sine squared x. All right, and then just taking this to the right, I don't know how much room I'm going to need. I'm going to take, well, just in case we need more room, we're going to kind of go up, up here to the upper right. We're going to take our numerator, which is 1 over cosine squared x. And our denominator, we're going to rewrite as cosine x. cosine squared x plus sine squared x over sine squared x. Now, what's going to happen about this third layer down here, cosine squared x plus sine squared x, what is that going to be equal to? Well, that's equal to 1. So let's rewrite this as 1 over cosine squared x. And this third layer down here, cosine squared x plus sine squared x, we'll rewrite this as 1 and over sine squared x. Okay? So next, we're going to take this and dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by what? It's reciprocal. So we're going to take 1 over cosine squared x and instead of dividing by 1 over sine squared x, we're going to multiply it by sine squared x over 1. Well, what is sine, sine x over cosine x? Well, that's the, the quotient identity, and just writing this in red, tangent x, I will say tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And here, in working on a problem, we have sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, so that's going to be equal to tangent squared theta. And that will be our most simplified answer here. So that's all the odd problems worked out. Uh, put theta there. I should put x. Should be tangent squared x to get in terms of the original variable. So good luck on the even problems of demonstration and learning. Now these are not the easiest things in the world to do but just kind of try to work through them and look for changing things in terms of sine and cosine and eventually simplifying, uh, getting common denominators. And things usually cancel out pretty well. If they don't, you're probably down a dead end and have to probably go back and try something else. Good luck to you, and thanks for viewing.